In this episode, let's have a quick look at the Yi Action Camera. I've wanted an action camera for a good long time, but I'm not really an action sports guy. That is, I'm not jumping off of cliffs with parachutes on my back, but I wanted one more for behind the scenes and to be able to do kind of different shots where you needed to get a very small camera in a very small space and behind the scenes and things of that nature. Now this is the HD version of the Yi Action Camera. There is also in about three weeks, they'll start shipping the 4K version here in the United States as well. This is about a $100 camera. And my main question was, 100 bucks, what corners did they have to cut to get the price down there? And is it really worth that money? In short, I think the answer is yes. The way they did it was actually pretty clever. What they've done is they have no screen whatsoever, no LCD on the back, not even an informational type screen on the front like the original GoPros had. So that's the one way they've cut that. But instead, what you do is you control the camera, other than the very basic things like start recording, with an app on your phone. So pretty clever uh, way to solve that problem. To keep the cost of this very low, you use an app on your phone to control the settings and the more advanced things. Rather than spout off all the technical specifications here, here they are listed for you. You can see by the specs that this camera is actually very, very similar to the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Silver Edition. So that is currently about a $280 camera. Uh, it does have some things that the E doesn't have, like a screen to see the settings that you're working with, but it does it also does not have a screen on the back to actually see what you're shooting. That's all handled in the case of the E by the phone. The E action camera is very simple. It comes with the camera itself and a USB to micro USB cable to recharge it and the battery. I also did buy with my own money the mounting accessory kit. And this is pretty nice because it includes a bunch of things which can be kind of handy. A suction cup mount, a clip mount, a wrist mount, a helmet mount, a chest harness mount, a float mount, a handlebar mount, and a selfie stick all for $20. Now it ships, the particular one I bought shipped from China so it took a while to get here, but all that for $20 and all of it seems pretty high quality. It's all plastic and neoprene and um, you know some aluminum, but overall seems great for $20. As I mentioned, the Yi has no built-in screen. You'll use your Android or iOS-based app with that to connect via Wi-Fi, where you can set up the settings, kind of get things framed up, and then you can start shooting directly from the camera. It has just a few buttons, a power and mode button, a shutter or record button, and a Wi-Fi button. The microphone is nothing special. It's pretty much what you would expect, a tiny little microphone on a tiny little camera, pretty much the same as the GoPro from what I can tell. Um, you don't buy these for their amazing audio quality. <laughs> and that's fine with me. That's not really why I need it. And, and honestly, I'm generally going to get rid of the audio that this records anyway. It does have four different status LEDs on it. So the one around the power button on the front actually not only lets you know that it's powered or it's recording, but it also lets you know how much battery you have left. There are also status lights on three of the other sides of the camera. So pretty much wherever you are, you can tell that it's recording. What's also very nice and kind of a thoughtful design is if, for example, you're going to shoot video time lapses through a hotel window on the 40th floor, like you've seen a million of those, I'm sure, what you can do is you can actually turn these LEDs off so that they don't reflect in the glass and get picked up in the picture. One of the other things you unfortunately do give up is you don't have anything equivalent to ProTune on the E Action Camera. ProTune on a GoPro allows you to manually set a variety of settings, including your exposure and white balance. And it also gives you kind of a flatter profile if you're going to do some color grading or color correction in post and you want to get a little bit more dynamic range. Unfortunately, this doesn't have that, but again, this is less than half the price of the least expensive GoPro out there. All the action footage that you're seeing here was taken with the action cam, so you can kind of judge for yourself whether it's good enough quality for what you're trying to do. For me, it seems pretty good, especially for $100. Using the app on your phone, you can also download the clips from the camera to your phone, and then from there you can, of course, transfer to your computer if you're going to do all your editing on your computer. The app is actually quite nice. I was impressed. Uh, early reviews when the action camera first came out a while back were that the app was really kind of not very full featured and it had some issues. Actually now it actually allows you to do quite a bit and works very nicely. It connects like a champ every time I've tried via Wi-Fi and uh, shows you live view what's going on with the camera in terms of what it's recording. There's a little bit of latency. You'd expect that over a Wi-Fi connection, but it's good enough to get things framed up and started. You have a whole variety of resolutions and frame rates up to 2K, 30 frames per second. That's a larger than full HD resolution, but you can also do 1080p up to 60 frames per second, which is really nice if you want to slow it down for slow motion, all the way down to 480p 
at 240 frames per second. So if you wanna do that really high speed recording that you can then slow down and post, you can do that as well. You can set your metering mode. You can go to spot metering, center weighted metering, or average metering. At least you get that. While you can't totally manually set all of the controls for exposure, they do at least give you that, which is nice to kind of adapt to different types of lighting situations. You also have an adjust lens distortion, which sort of fixes that kind of barrel distortion. And the E Action Cam has a 155 degree um, field of view, very similar to the GoPro. You can also tell it to turn on Wi-Fi when you boot up the camera, which is really nice because that way you can get a quicker start on getting it connected to the app on your phone. It also outputs via HDMI, a stream of the signal. So you can also record to, if you have a um, an HDMI recorder of some sort or something that actually records into your computer, uh, you can use that as well. Kind of a nice little additional option there. You can also rotate the video. So if you're going to mount the camera upside down, which you may have to do in some circumstances, there's a setting in the menu to rotate that, which is nice. You can also do loop recording on this, which is nice if you're going to use it as a dash cam, for example. What that means is that when it's filled up the card, it will actually go back and start recording over the oldest material. So kind of a nice little feature there. You can set up the default camera mode. So when you boot up the camera, it can be set to go to video mode, which is how I typically have it. That way, if I need to quickly start recording something, all I have to do is boot it up, press the record button, and I'm in business. Also, firmware is updatable. So overall conclusion, I think for $100, this camera is pretty impressive for what you get. They cut that price down to $100 by not putting a screen on the back or even a status screen on the front and instead relying on an app on your phone which I think is a fair trade-off. In terms of quality, it seems decent. Um, if you drop it or throw it, yeah, you're probably gonna scratch it up. It doesn't come with any accessories, but the accessory packs are fairly affordable um, and decent quality as well. So overall, I think the action camera is definitely worth the money. If you don't have the money to really spend on a more expensive action cam, and this one will fulfill your needs, I think it's a pretty good buy. Go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. Thanks for checking out the episode. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.